my name is Sharon Hurst, you know me, I'm the fantasy watercolourist. I've had a picture up on Facebook and people have been asking me how I get the salt effects. So I thought the easiest way to explain it all was to actually show you. So the first thing I need to do is just mask out around the areas that I'm going to paint. Here we go. So here we have this lovely thin blue masking fluid, bar of soap and my brush. And I need to wet my brush and then I'm going to fill all of the fibres of it with soap. So scrub it in that little bar of soap so that everything is covered and then I'm just going to roll it to get rid of the bubbles. So now I can mask my picture out and my brush will be safe from this gooey gunge. So round here it'll make it so much easier to paint if I have just got this edge I can paint up to it and not worry about going over the lines. So that's her boots filled in. This area here, her thigh, I've painted it. It doesn't matter as long as I load my brush and I come through there, no fluffy brushing, I'm just going to swipe it with the masking fluid and I won't disturb the paint underneath. So now I need to let that dry. So my masking fluid is all dry now and I need to just be laying some colours into the top of this tomb. I want them to have this frosted effect here but it's got to be lighter because the light from the moon is shining down. The important thing to remember when you're using salt is to have everything ready so I need to have my salt to hand, I have the water and all of my colours are in my palette. The first thing I want to do is come across here with a number 8 brush, this is an 8 sable, and I want to wet the area and I'm going to do this purely and simply because the paper will suck that water in and absorb it and I won't be able to use the salt. So let's just give the paper a drink. Imagine you're giving it a drink. So pop the water across the area that you're going to paint and then I simply want to come in, drop in a few colours. So here we have a little bit of burnt sienna. I'll put some along here as well, just a little. It'll brighten it up rather than making it too dull with greys. And then how about here, this is burnt umber. Let's have some burnt umber in the mix as well. So pop some of that along, all along the edge here. That's a bit of masking fluid, get rid of that. So I'm going to pop that through here. And the next thing I want to do is perhaps come in with a little bit of Payne's Grey. Pop this up along the edge of the tree there. And just scumble the paint in. You don't have to really work at it and, and think about it too hard. I just want to pop in a few colours, that's all. Just like this. Varying colours. So how about a little bit of green as well, so that it reflects this mossy business going on here. So we can just do that, a little bit there. Drop it in all over. And then I think really, I need to be thinking about where, exactly where shadows would lay. So I need to know where my light source is, it's up here. The cat's getting in on the act now. I would have shadow under the bowl. This is Payne's grey. Dark shadow under her legs here. Dark shadow. And this cloak would be throwing a shadow through here and the sword would too. The end of the sword here. So now, now the paint is in suspension on the paper and that's the important thing and this is the point where I can start dropping the salt in. Don't go mad, less is more. So we drop the salt in, do this, look at it, think about how it's working. It won't work immediately, you've got to wait and be patient. But at this point I can, if I want to, go back with my brush and just drop in a few little bits of colour, extra colour like this, just to give it a speckled effect. 
just drop in a few little bits like this. How about a few blobs of green just to make it look like bunched lichens? Don't overwhelm the salt with liquid. You have to put the salt on when the paint's in suspension on the paper. It's really important. Once the colour has soaked into the paper, you will not, the salt will not lift it out again. It won't come out. So now we wait and we see what happens. Okay, so here we go. The salt's off. I've just rubbed it off with my finger and I've taken the masking fluid off, same way, just gently rub it. Make sure it's all bone dry first. So just rub it away and brush it away. That's gone. So finally, I just want to show you, you can paint on top of salt, but don't expect to have beautiful, delicate work. So using Payne's Grey, I want to define this edge here. So coming into the paint and simply draw the, work, the line along here. So straight along like so. And this will define the edge of that tomb, that top edge. And then we blend it away simply by rinsing the brush, dabbing the drip off and then coming in underneath and softly, softly blending. That's once. Clean the brush, dab the drip, and then come in again and blend it across. And that will give you the shadow on the edge of the tomb. Good definition. So when it's finished, I'll post it up on Facebook again, post it up on my website, and you'll be able to see the finished item. But that is a master blast, fast class, on how to use salt.